this is the last time the, the show in, in this uh, way will be presented and called Clarkson Hammond and May. This is, you're billing this as last ever. Uh, well, let, let's not call it the last ever. We don't know. It is the end of the current tour. It's the end, actually, of sort of seven years of fairly constant touring. We've been... Here come the plug figures. Uh, we've been to 32 countries and we think we've played to 2.2 million people all the way around the world, all the way around to Australia and back. Um, so that ends on Sunday night at the O2. But that's not the end of the whole thing. It's the, it's the end of the beginning, as Churchill would have yeah. said. It's and like the Doctor new Who, it's a reincarnation. Yeah. And the there new beginning be. is your new show for Amazon Prime. So what can you tell us? When does it start? What's it going to be called? Uh, What's it going to be like? <laughs> I knew yeah. you'd ask me all the things Spill I could Spill the beans. Answer. <laughs> um, it will start roughly uh, in the autumn of next year, but we haven't got an exact date yet. We don't know what it's called yet because we've had a lot of brainstorming sessions on names and it's actually very difficult to come up with a new name for something that hasn't already been bagged by someone else. Unless you call your new show Shibbly Dibbly Wibbly or something like that. <laughs> I think that's quite catchy. Well, actually, that's quite good, isn't it? Shibbly Dibbly Wibbly on Amazon Prime. Dibbly Wibbly on Amazon Prime. I'll be Shibbly. Yeah, he'll Jeremy be Dibbly. Dibbly. Yeah. yeah. So well, we don't have a name, and that's not. I'm not just trying yeah. to be secretive. We genuinely haven't got one yet. Uh, we know roughly when we're going to start. We've done some filming. Um, but we've had to start from scratch. It's quite weird because, I mean, the, the starting point was the three of us standing on the pavement, pretty much, saying, right, let's do it. So we've had to find an office, we've had to buy a printer, you know, we've had to get a stationery oh, cut. Don't, you know, don't give us that. I heard, I was given an insight into the budget you have per programme, and it is ginormous, gigantic. <laughs> it's yes, amazing. I well, it's quite big, yes, fair enough, but it does cost a lot of money to make very high-quality TV in exotic locations. Yeah. This is great plug material. This <laughs> um, so, although I know everybody thinks we've been given a massive sack full of money and we've all gone off and bought Lamborghinis and gone out to lunch, but it isn't actually like that. We don't get all the money in one go, and a huge, huge portion of it has to go on making the films. It, that you just can't be done cheaply, and they yeah. want it to look... Brilliant. And we have to pay for an office and we have to get a pencil sharpener. Are and you that's saying that's, that doesn't start until you think the autumn next year? But the new Top Gear starts, I think, in March or April, May next year, doesn't it? So they're going well, to be ahead of so, you. Well, we think so, but weirdly, they're not giving us many details. Funny that. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, they'll, they'll be on before us. But the, won't the difference be uh, between you and whatever follows on the BBC that you will be an international programme, that you have to appeal to an international audience? Yes, well, Top Gear always did as well. It was a very international programme. We made it in Britain, and we are British. We can't help that, unfortunately. Um, I don't think that's going to be very different from the way we do it in the future. You can't, you can't try and make it an, a, an international programme in the sense that it will fit everywhere. You have to make a decision on whether you're talking about miles or kilometres or litres or gallons, which language you're speaking, and all the rest of it. So it's still... Mm -hmm. It's not that different. I think the, the really interesting thing about it is... I think it's going to be very healthy having two big, essentially international car programs because this is this is the thing that people don't realise. I think it's actually very good that we now have a credible rival and that the two can so can spur win -win. each other on. It's a win-win. Well, I think it is for the viewers. The You've now got yeah. two big two car shows, shows yeah. and there only used to be one. Okay, so. as we say goodbye to you now, James. Um, I just want to say your brother, David. Yes. Yes. What's he, he done? Well, he's ruined my life. He's ruined yes, your life. Yes, he ruined mine as yes. well. His brother David is a drum teacher and he teaches <laughs> my son. He introduced my son to the drums and basically... And he's on grade five now. He's doing very well. My and brother's we love got it. grade five. No, my son's on oh, grade five nice. thanks to your brother. Noise, noise, noise. Yeah, yeah. well that's what I grew up noise. with. Yeah. I mean I was civilised. I played the piano and so on but my brother had a drum kit by the time he was about 11. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, life was over essentially. <laughs> Dreadful human being. Yeah. What two old bores you are. <laughs> David, we'll stick with the drum. Stick with me. Thank you very much. We should look Thank forward you for to me. your new show whenever it happens to come on. Thank Back you. Let us know.